There he is, Caleb. How are you, my friend? Good. How are you doing, right? Not too bad. First of all, Caleb, I want to ask you, how are your family and what your loved ones doing during COVID-19? Is everyone okay, safe and sound? Yeah, thanks for asking, man. Uh, everybody's good. My, uh, my kids are at home and healthy. My girlfriend's at home and healthy with them right now. Uh, I'm uh, in the bubble, the PBC bubble in Los Angeles, getting some good sleep for the first time in a while. And uh, uh, everybody's good. My extended family's good too, man. So uh, how about yours? Are you, all your people good too? Everyone's doing okay and safe and sound. Lost a couple of uh, family friends who were a little bit older, but still, I mean, you know, sure, yeah, it's unfortunate, sure, yeah, but yeah. I mean, su such is life, you know. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, thank you very much. But uh, Caleb, let's talk about, you know, you're in the PBC bubble, so that's what I want to dive into first, because people are so curious. How's the bubble like? What it, What is the process? Uh, can you tell us about what your experience has been like? Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's different. Obviously, uh, we have to adjust and adapt to uh, these crazy times, and, and PBC is doing a great job of keeping all of us fighters and uh, people that are working the fight safe by – taking it really strict and uh, really seriously and, and, you know, sanitizing everything. Uh, since I got here yesterday, I've been quarantined to my, to my uh, hotel room. And I just got word just uh, like 20 minutes ago that my, that my test uh, came back negative for COVID. So now I have a little bit more access to uh, uh, some of the amenities. I can walk around a little bit, but uh, um, still, uh, still different, man. It's, uh, it's definitely different. What was the process like when it comes to your preparation? Because I, I know that, you know, you don't necessarily are able to bring in as many sparring partners because you have to be so diligent and, and disciplined when it comes to making sure that everyone that you have a part of your gym is tested and, and okay and social distancing. Well, did you have any issues when it came to preparing for this fight against Pedro Angulo? Because we're living in a different world now. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call them issues. I I would just say that it was different. You know, uh, we 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 made do with what we had, and um, thankfully we had a couple good guys uh, to spar with. Local Nate Richardson, who who goes to my gym, he's a real uh, real good MMA fighter and and glory kickboxer, and he's had a couple of boxing matches. He's he's uh, a pressure fighter, so that helped uh, in preparation for Angulo. And then I boxed with uh, Cruz Stewart, who's a Minneapolis guy. Um, he's a seven and zero as a pro, I believe. And um, another guy, uh, Tony Woods, who's 3-0 and as a pro. Uh, so I had some good sparring with those guys. And uh, like you said, we couldn't bring in uh, the normal sparring partners. Uh, the PBC wanted me to limit the people I was in that were in my bubble and uh, didn't want me to bring in anyone from, from hot spots or, or anywhere where uh, there was an outbreak in the country. So it was a little tricky navigating it, but it wasn't really a, wasn't really a challenge or anything like that. Just made so you it. had your own bubble at your training camp in Minnesota? Basically, yeah. We, we tried to work out at times when other people weren't there. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I basically didn't do anything for the last uh, uh, two or three weeks or saw, saw the same people that I always see, my family, and, and uh, that's about it. But um, just try to stay safe, man, and try to stay away from people and don't go to uh, – um, any social gatherings or anything like that that I normally would. I, I know I, I'm a big uh, – uh, I love playing golf and I love playing in charity tournaments back home, and I had to turn down a couple of uh, charity tournaments um, this past few weeks, and that was killing me. But uh, uh, it would have been nice to get out and golf, but I don't want to take the risk and, and end up positive and not be able to fight. Well, let's talk about your opponent on Saturday night, Alfredo Pedro Angulo. He's coming off of a win over Peter Quillen, when incidentally that was uh, your second to last opponent that happened in a no contest in April. What, what is your assessment of Pedro Angulo as you get set for your eliminator matchup on Saturday night? Uh, he's, a, he's a former champion like myself. He's a, your classic Mexican brawler. He's going to come forward, uh, try to pressure me, try to go to the body and wear me down, and it's my job to – to control the distance and keep him away from me and, and uh, uh, just uh, counter when I, when, I'm, when he's coming forward. And uh, I think he's a, I think he's a really good fighter. I think he's a, a veteran. Um, I, he had a, he had an awesome performance against Peter Quill. And I, I, uh, I was talking earlier in an interview, it, it didn't surprise me that he, that he won, but I picked Quillen to, to win like most people did, I believe. And uh, rightfully he got the decision. And, and uh, this is why we're here today. 
How do you feel, you know, you've been fighting for over a decade, Caleb, and, and you have had, you know, some incredible highs, having won the world title, you've beaten some quality names, and, and yet I still feel like you have this sense of urgency, like you want to go ahead and, and there's, you know, there's still that glimmer of ice. Some guys get burnt out from boxing. You've been fighting consistently for 13 years, yet I still feel like you have that same energy if you are 5 or 6-0. and oh. What do you attribute that to? Uh, you know, a few things. I I started late in boxing. I didn't start till I was um, about 20 years old. And a lot of times when guys start when they're when they're kids, you know, they get burned out and have a lot of amateur fights and that kind of wears in them. So I didn't have all that wear and tear on me when I was, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And um, also, you know, I've, I've always kind of uh, uh, approached everything like I'm the underdog and I usually am the underdog and, and that kind of motivates me to uh, – to go out and prove everyone wrong, and I'm a very competitive person, so anything I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach uh, with uh, with the utmost, um, um, I guess uh, I don't know what the word like for it, but I, I approach it. Yeah, I, I approach everything the same way when uh, when I'm uh, competitive like that, and uh, I just want to prove everybody wrong. And, I, and this fight, I, I believe, uh, it seems. To me, like I'm the underdog in this fight as well, because they he's the A side, I guess, if you want to say he's on uh, uh, on the left side of the poster, and you know it's Piero Angulo versus former champion Caleb. So uh, that's the way I'm approaching this one too. Well, see, and I want to go back to your past a little bit, but getting to your point, I think this is very much a 50-50 fight. You know, when when I'm looking at this, I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think both of you guys, former champions, both of you have been fighting for over a decade. Both of you have had quality win so I think this is a very much of a 50-50 fight which makes it so compelling along with the fact that it's an eliminator fight yeah it's it's for the IBF uh, number two spot and so uh, the winner of this will I believe they'll uh, get the winner of Caleb Plan versus his next fight I believe that's how it will go down but um, yeah man he's he's a he's a quality quality fighter and and he just had a huge win that kind of revitalized his career. And um, I imagine he's approaching it the same way I am is, is this is kind of like a crossroads. Like we're both, I think he's 38, I'm 36. And, and uh, when, when you're as old as us two guys, uh, we don't have much room for uh, uh, error and, and uh, no time to rebuild and, and, uh, and do that. So we have to approach every fight like it's our last, basically. Caleb, last, uh, you know, in your past, you have, you were, you didn't get into boxing early. You got into boxing late because you were a college football player. Well, what was that like? What position did you play? And for many people who don't know, they just see you as being, you know, a fighter accomplished for over a decade, but they don't know that you necessarily played college football. Yeah, I went to school in, in Virginia, Virginia State University, my freshman year. And uh, ended up hurting my knee. Well, I hurt my knee in high school and, and wouldn't get better. It got worse, in fact. And, and so I ended up not playing football and coming back to the University of Minnesota um, um, for my sophomore year. And that's why I graduated. But, um, yeah, I pl I've been an athlete my whole life. I played football at, uh, at uh, all-conference level. I played baseball at all-conference level. And, and baseball was my, was, my, uh, was my first love. That's... Uh, uh, still probably my favorite sport till today. I'm, you can find me uh, watching the Twins games every night at my house. So, um, yeah, man, I, uh, I'm just an athlete. I love sports in general. I, I'm a fan of, of football, baseball, basketball. I'm a fan of boxing. I was a fan of boxing before I had, ever had a dream of, of becoming a boxer. So um, I just love sports in general. I love boxing. I love everything. Who are some fighters that you looked up to as you were just kind of going through everyday life as a standout football player? Uh, I remember back in it's probably I can't remember the years, but uh, my my best friend Rob he used to uh, he used to uh, have a black box uh, <laughs> for uh, free uh, free pay per views and oh, stuff like I, that. I remember those. <laughs> and, uh, we don't get we those were, anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> but we'd always watch. Uh, he was a big Evander Holyfield guy, and I was a big Lennox Lewis guy. And so we'd, uh, we went back and forth in that rivalry. But my, my favorite guy um, when I was uh, younger was uh, Felix Trinidad. That was my guy. And I was a huge Tito fan and watched him fight uh, live on HBO a bunch of times over at Rob's house and a couple other places as well. And uh, that's my, my, my dog is named after. My dog is Tito Trinidad Truex. He's named after Felix Trinidad. 
That's why. Okay, that makes all the sense in the world. I know you're, you know, you you love your dog and everything else. And when it comes to Lennox Lewis, he's actually going to be commentating your fight as an analyst on the Fox broadcast. Uh, how special does that make you feel? I mean, I know that you're focused on Angulo, but that has to be a nice little added bonus for you. Yeah, it's cool, man. He, uh, I've met him uh, a few times at uh, at the PBC. Uh, launch press conference for uh, the PBC on Fox series. I met him and I met him in Minneapolis um, before. Uh, I think he was announcing the fight that I had to pull out of uh, 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 Lara versus um, uh, Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah. And so I met him there and, and uh, I know I, I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit starstruck. I usually don't get that way, but uh, like I said, I grew up watching him and I was like, man, <laughs> what's up Lennox. But uh, no, it'd be cool to, to have him commentate my fight as well. That's, that's going to be awesome. Well, you brought up Minneapolis, and I have to say that there is something special about the Armory in Minneapolis because I think that that is becoming one of my favorite venues for, for prize fighting. I don't know how far you go back in boxing, but there's a building in Philadelphia known as the Blue Horizon that's a legendary place. And the fact that the Armory is older, it was in the, the print, one of the Prince videos in the late 1980s. And when the fans come out, uh, nothing can deter the fans from coming out when we do are, are able to have fans back in the arenas. Every time I've been at the Armory for your fight for Jamal James, doesn't matter. The place is loud. It's packed. I've been there for snowstorms, and it's still sold yeah. out. And the place is still <laughs> rocking. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic venue, man. I, I know my, my favorite uh, my favorite venue in boxing was always the Home Depot Center. I forgot what it's called now. Oh, uh, Dickie uh, Sports Park. <laughs> it's yeah, gone through a couple yeah. name changes. Yeah, yeah, I, I used to love that, and that, and obviously that place is a little bit bigger and it's outdoors, but it gives me the same vibe uh, as the Armory gives. It's just a, a really uh, intense crowd that, and, Min and Minnesota has uh, uh, knowledgeable boxing fans. You know, we we uh, we have a, a rich history in boxing, and people come out support myself, support Jamal, and uh, you said it, man. Like you come in there, and uh, I think two fights in a row for Jamal, he's had. Uh, you know, we've had 12 inches of snow or something like that in April, and there's still, you know, 3,000 or 2,500 fans there or whatever it's been. And when I fought Quillen that first time, it was like 43 or 4,300 fans, uh, a sold-out fight, and, and uh, it looks awesome on TV. You got the purple lights going and the old-school building, and, and uh, the sound travels well in there. It's just, it's just an awesome venue. Does can't that motivate you? Can we get back there when uh, back to normal, man? Hopefully, uh, it get back to it gets back to normal sometime soon, so I have an opportunity to fight there again. Does that amp you up and give you goosebumps? Because I love watching the fans who get it so excited and passionate for you guys, especially the hometown fighters. Uh, when Jamal has fought, when you have fought, you know people are just decked out. I know you love wearing gold and gold for colors. That's where you graduated from. But the place is just on a different planet of craziness right before you guys are getting ready to fight. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I was talking to somebody today about that, uh, uh, asking, you know, how is it going to be different fighting in front of no fans? Um, you know, in the in the Microsoft Theater, and like it's going to be. To be honest, it's going to be strange because I've never fought, and most of my fights have been in Minneapolis or uh, in Minnesota. And and the ones that haven't been in Minnesota, they've been big fights, you know, like big championship fights or or TV fights. So there's always a pretty big crowd at those. Um, and like I said, when uh, when I'm at the Armory, everybody's chanting Caleb and it's going crazy and. Uh, uh, it's going to be different for sure to, to fight in front of no fans, but uh, I can't wait till we can get back to, to fighting in front of fans so everybody can have fun and, and go out and watch the fights. So the past couple of weeks, Minnesota fighters have gone 2-0. and Jamal James, uh, Rob Brandt. You're now the third one, third three in the pressure a row. <laughs> Minnesota boxing, doing what they're doing. I mean, how excited are you to say, all right, you know, my, my guys in, in the city handle business, and now I'm going to be the third one, and, and here we go against Pedro Angulo on Saturday. You know what? It, it motivates me, man, uh, to see Jamal, uh, I believe it was three weeks ago, uh, win his WBA strap uh, that he's been coveting for so long. It was uh, fantastic, man. I, I, I watched the fight on pins and needles, and, uh, and uh, every time somebody fights that I know, I, I get super nervous, like way more nervous than I get uh, when I'm fighting myself. And uh, then I watched Rob uh, Rob Brandt win his fight against a tough Russian guy. I think it was last week on ESPN. 
and uh, it just motivates me to put on uh, even more of a uh, awesome performance just to to, to hang with those guys. <laughs> Caleb, you know what I love about you guys is that you know there isn't any inner city rivalry. Uh, you guys all support one another. When I had Jamal James on a couple of weeks ago, prior to his title matchup against Delorme, he was very complimentary of you. He goes, "Yeah, he goes. You know, we live in different parts of the city, but I support you know Caleb Truex. You have mentioned that you support Jamal James, Rob Brand. I know Rob Brand feels the same way about you guys as well. But I love how you guys support one another within your city, and everyone's able to go ahead and put all their energy and support behind when you guys fight every single time out." Yeah, I, I imagine it's not like that in, in most places or, or a lot of other places. But uh, Minnesota is a, is a small boxing community. And, uh, you know, I grew up with those guys, man. Uh, Jamal and I were basically on the same amateur team uh, when I was an amateur. And and uh, he, I think he's probably about um, like four or five years younger than I am. And, you know, so I was 20 and he was a 15-year-old little kid and uh, – Still about as tall and skinny as he is now, but uh, <laughs> but uh, he was uh, uh, we were on the same team together. And Rob came along a little bit after our, I turned pro, and uh, we sparred tons of rounds together um, when he was an amateur and, and when he was a, a, a beginning pro. Um, helped each other out whenever we could, and and uh, uh, when you have a small boxing community like we do in Minnesota, I think you have to help each other out, otherwise you're not going to get better. Um, and there's limited sparring and and uh, uh, limited resources, so you just got to work together. And speaking of Minnesota boxing, you were the one that went over to England a couple of years ago, I believe in December of 2017, and yeah. ripped the title away from James DeGale. And Minnesota boxing went crazy. The fight fans, it was a wonderful response. What was that moment like for you? when all the hard work and the time and the energy, the blood, sweat, and tears, when you were crowned the new super middleweight champion of the world. Oh, man, it was, uh, it was uh, fantastic, man. I'll carry it with me th for the rest of my life. And, and like you said, coming home to kind of like the, like the hero's welcome or whatever, we, we get to the airport, me and my, my coach Tom Hall say I get to the airport, and there's like uh, news camera crews waiting for us at the airport to do interviews and – and uh, then everywhere I went for for months, everybody uh, you know is, is congratulating me, and and I uh, wanted to buy my meals and buy my drinks and do all this stuff, and I didn't turn that down. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, um, nah, man, it uh, it was fantastic. Everybody is, who supported me since day one um, continues to support me, and and it's uh, well, you've seen the the atmosphere at the army. You know, it's a little bit different from for most fighters because I've established that hometown crowd and hometown base fan base. And when, when the armory come, when armory fills up and there's 4,000 people, you know, most of those people have been to most of my fights and, and a, and a big percentage of them are people that I know personally, uh, just throughout the years of coming to my fights or people I went to high school with, people I went to college with people I know from boxing or other sports. So it's a, it's a different, uh, different type of vibe um, in Minnesota than probably in, in other places where uh, it's uh, there's a, a bigger boxing community. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because the one item I would say about when you fight in Minneapolis and, and just your fans in general is I feel like it is a personal connection. Like they all know you or they've all had experiences with you. Not that they're, they're coming to buy to watch you fight, but I feel like mm -hmm. they have had in interaction with you at some point of their life. And it is resounded by the way that they cheer for you, by the way that they come out to support you. It's just something that's hard to explain because I feel like you have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the fight fans within Minnesota. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, you know, like I said, I, a lot of the people that are at those fights are people I know personally and, and people that I've interacted with over the years through various uh, chari chari uh, charity events or, or just out at the grocery store or, or wherever, you know, I grew up in, in Osseo and, and uh, I've stayed in pretty much the same area uh, my whole, my whole life basically. And, and uh, when I'm out and about, you know, people come up and say what's up and, and uh, sign autographs and take pictures and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool experience. So if you're successful on Saturday night against Pedro Angulo, PBC on Fox 8 Eastern, Five Pacific Time, seven Central Time. I believe Minneapolis is Central Time, right? Uh, just wanted to make sure. But um, 
What are your thoughts on Caleb Plant, an, another fellow Caleb as well? Because if you know you're successful, you would be one of the mandatories for Caleb Plant. So, how would you assess what Caleb Plant has been able to do in a potential matchup with him in the future? Uh, he's he's a good fighter. He's uh, he's a, a fantastic boxer. He's got uh, good balance, good speed, good uh, footwork. Uh, throws lots of combinations. So it's a it's a tough task, but uh, I'm up for it and. Uh, you know, we've had some uh, words in the past, and I'm sure he, uh, he, he, like I, are are uh, ready to uh, get in there and uh, work out our differences like men and and uh, fight. <laughs> so, what has been said between the two of you and stuff? I mean, I see guys going back and forth on social media, and it's kind of hard to keep up with everybody and stuff. But what are some things that have been said, and did anything bother you? No, I just talk, just just talking, you know, just talking. And he uh, he talks a lot, and and uh, I said some things, and just nothing, nothing in particular. Just uh, uh, he wanted to fight me when I had my belt with uh, De Gale, and and now I want to fight him. So <laughs> I got you. So you guys are just going after being prize fighters, trying to show that you're the best. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what's interesting about that, Caleb? Is I've never seen you. I always see you in in great spirits. I don't think I've ever seen in your career where you've had animosity towards another fighter. Not to say that there's animosity with Caleb Plant, but you know, I feel like there's some gamesmanship that might be going on there. Yeah, I never I never really have any animosity. There's been a few fights where where uh uh a couple local rivalries where uh, I've had some uh uh more than just regular words exchanged, but uh it's all gamesmanship man and it's uh part of the part of the sport and and uh, we're confident people as fighters. And, and if you tell me something that I don't like, I'm going to express my uh, feelings of, uh, of doubt with you. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's just all uh, part of the game. Caleb, what can fans expect on Saturday night? Because as I look at this fight with you and Pedro Angulo, I think you need to get your popcorn, your favorite food and beverage, because I think there is no way that this can't be an exciting fight. I think it is absolutely destined to be a fan-friendly scrap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I think uh, he'll probably uh, steal the show on the on the card, and you know he's going to come forward. I'm gonna I, I like to come forward as well, so it's my job to stop him from pressuring me. And I'm the bigger man, uh, the the natural um, super middleweight. So uh, I think I'll be have some success pushing him backwards and and uh, dictating the the pace of the fight. And uh, it's two guys that are going to come together in the middle of the ring and fight. And like you said. Uh, grab some uh, snacks and, and grab your Lupulin eight count IPA and uh, be ready for the, uh, be ready for the, the fight. That's a new business venture that you're in as well, right, Caleb? Yeah. It's the, the signature beer from uh, one of my sponsors, Lupulin Brewing in Big Lake. They, uh, they made a, an awesome IPA that, uh, um, yeah, that's got my face on the can and it's called eight count. It's all about boxing and, and uh, it's been selling really well and everybody's enjoying it. And, and uh, when I get back home, I'm going to enjoy a couple of the celebrate. Well, getting back to Angulo, in your mind, is the reason why Peter Quillen wasn't able to eke out the win against Angulo is because he allowed Angulo to walk him down? Are you focused on making sure that you're the aggressor and you have him fighting backwards? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, watching the tape the dozens of times that I've seen it already in the last six weeks, uh, I think um, – Angulo was able to get him moving backwards too early in the fight. And uh, Quillen, I think he won uh, some of the early rounds, but uh, um, he was he was doing that as he was still moving backwards. And I think, um, you know, when you get a pressure fighter that's coming forward like that, you got to stay on your ground and, and uh, um, try to counter him or, or try to uh, control the distance better than, than he did. And, and that's what you said earlier. That's what's going to make for a good fight because that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm pumped about it. And how excited are you for NFL football to be back? I know that you're a Vikings fan. I'm the opposite side, being a devout um, Bears fan. I'm a Steelers fan. I'm a, I'm a Steelers fan, man. I'm a big-time, lifetime, diehard Steelers fan. So uh, I, uh, I know a bunch of the guys on the Vikings, so I cheer for them. But uh, I'm a, when it comes to the, to, down to it, I'm a, I'm a diehard Steelers fan. Okay, excellent. So you're excited about the year starting up again in the next few weeks. Absolutely, man. I uh, I got a fancy football draft as soon as I get back, so uh, <laughs> I gotta I gotta do some study. Maybe I got some time in the next couple of days. I'll study up and uh, and uh, see what I'm gonna pick for my draft. But uh, I love football. I love watching it. I I've uh, I've kind of uh, I used to go watch with my friends all the time, but now that I have my two kids, I uh, I turn my my daughter into a Steelers fan. She wants to watch the games with me on Sunday, and 
And uh, my son is too young yet, but he's still wearing Steelers gear. So uh, now I got two uh, two watch buddies for, uh, for football. Very cool. I always ask fighters this, and you know, you can either answer it or decide to uh, decline. But what's your prediction on Saturday night against Pedro Angulo as you prepare for your matchup? BBC on Fox, eight Eastern, seven Central time in Minneapolis, five Pacific time. Uh predict an exciting fight. I predict a tough fight. I think that uh, I'm going to have to go through hell to, to get him out of there or, or get a decision, and I predict that I'll win. Well, thank you very much, Caleb. And finally, what do you want to tell all your fans that are watching right now as we continue to deal with the coronavirus, COVID-19, this worldwide pandemic? Uh, you know what? Thanks for supporting me all these years, 13 years, 14 years, something like that. And... Uh, Hopefully you'll tune in on, on Friday night in Fox. Let's get these, or excuse me, Saturday night on Fox. Let's get these uh, these viewership numbers up all across boxing. And everybody stay safe, man. It's uh, uh, Everybody's lives are important to uh, to uh, one another, and, and you just need to wear your mask, wash your hands, stay safe. Caleb, thank you so much, my friend. We look forward to your matchup on Saturday night live on Fox against Pedro Angulo.